Well, why would I do that? <laughs> Glad to see you here. <laughs>
contact me and um, we're looking for help for everything that we're going to be doing that morning. So I encourage you all to come out. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. And we welcome back our two girls, Kimmy and Ava. Wave. Remember, we sent them off with a blessing last Sunday. And on their behalf, I'm going to read their thank you letters to you for helping them get to camp. Dear Church, thank you for helping. This is from Kim. Kitty. Go to camp. I had so much fun. I love doing all of the activities. I learned to paddle boarding kayak. Had you ever done that before, Kimmy? Paddle, paddle boarding kayak. Oh, cool. We had campfires and sang new songs. I liked staying in the cabin. And yes, at one moment, the, uh, the tornado warning did happen. They were in Bear County. And they got to go to the shelter. Thank you for that. Thank you. The storm seemed to hit Rice Lake more than Washita. I met new friends. My camp counselor was awesome. Sincerely, Kimmy. We were happy to send you to Camp Kim. And from Ava, um, her thank you letter. Thank you so much <clears throat> for the money for church camp. I really enjoyed going. My three, three favorite things, I loved how you did the three, the three and ones, were paddle boarding, the challenge course, and the game room. And the kids had an awesome time, and can't wait to go back next summer. So, we look forward to sending you again to camp. <clears throat> Announcements, um, next Sunday, David Potter, our guest Clavinova organist, will be playing. And it's a fun Sunday when David is here. And so if you guys want any hymns that you really want to sing, just let me know. And we'll make sure they, uh, we sing them next Sunday. And a special thanks to Dave for Elsa and Rob um, helping us sing some of our songs. <clears throat> so the first song, um, after... Our call to confession, your insert, seed scattered and sown. They will be singing the verses for us, and then we sing the refrain. But as Elsa said, if you want to join them in the actual verses, you are welcome to join them. And with that, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. But the call to confession is found in your bulletin. Sin destroys our lives. Sin destroys our relationships. Sin destroys our hope. But through faith in the saving death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our lives, our relationships, and our future are no longer enslaved to sin. Death cannot bind us, for the risen Christ sets us free. Hear the good news. In Jesus' name, we are forgiven. Again, I invite you to find seeds scattered and sown, your insert, and I invite you to join in the refrain, or the verses if you wish.
Good morning. Good morning. We'll turn that on. Don't be messing with my skin. I'll put back, I swear. All right, we're going to read Psalm 139. I invite you to recite the bold portions as printed in your bulletin. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. Search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot obtain it. Where can I go from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, if I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. The gospel this morning is taken from the 13th chapter of Matthew, beginning with the 36th verse. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. 
The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is at the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with the fire, so it shall be at the end of the age, the Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of the darkness in the kingdom of all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The word of the Lord. A reading from a reading from Romans chapter eight. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it. In hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay, and will obtain the freedom of glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been growing in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit grow inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. A reading from Romans chapter 8. Grace and peace to you from God our Creator, and from Jesus Christ, God's only Son. Amen. If you were on a stranded island, and you could only take one book, maybe it'd be the Bible, but let's really narrow it down. Let's say you were going to live on a stranded island, and you could only have one chapter in the entire Bible to have with you. I submit this would be a good one to consider. Romans chapter 8. And I do invite you right now to find your few Bibles and open up to page 1326. Romans chapter 8 actually begins just a little bit prior there on page 1325 at the bottom, Life of the Spirit. But flip the page there on 1326. And just what I want you to notice is how many times in the church year we read Romans chapter 8. I bet you if you were to take you know, our, our Bibles here and just you know, like quickly do this, you would find that this is the one page that is read the most throughout the church year. Here we see the green, we're in the ordinary season. There you see the kind of that, that splash of purple. Romans chapter 8 is red in the season of Lent. That orangish color for the day of Pentecost, High Festival Sunday, is red in both years C and B, and Trinity Sunday. This passage in Romans 8 
is read throughout the entire church year. And also often at funerals, which will be the text for next Sunday. So I just wanted you to see how important Romans chapter 8 is. Now, this letter to Romans, Paul never made it to Rome. And he wrote this as a letter for the Romans, the people living in Rome to read, so that they could live lives formed by the Spirit of Jesus Christ. But this book of Romans, perhaps more than any other book in the Bible, has been turned over to the experts theologians and scholars who probably have spent their lives probing its death. And all of us would be poor without their scholarship. But what is unfortunate is if we believe that only the experts can interpret this book of Romans. We can read it for ourselves. Romans is primarily a work of spiritual formation in a congregation. People just like us who make meals, raise children, and go to work. I would really encourage you just to spend time in Romans 8. I have been experiencing um, just joy now in reading Romans for all of these weeks. It was something I felt when I first got here, I, wasn't, I couldn't tackle. I thought I couldn't interpret Romans either. But I'm realizing now, even I can read it to get something out of it. And this is where I landed on this week, these beautiful words. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Christian hope is not pie in the sky. Paul speaks of hope, but hope is rooted in our ability to see what yet cannot be seen. Would you agree with me that as a country, most Americans are optimists? but not hopeful. We still cling to the myth of progress, despite our unceasing wars and violence. Hope, optimism, they're easily confused. Optimism is based on cause and effect thinking, based on something that happened in the past, we draw conclusions about the future based on those experiences. We're guided by the belief that things can get better. And I think especially of uh, the world's greatest generation. We made it through, you guys made it through World War II, the 1950s came, progress, GI Bill, many soldiers able to get schooling. You were better off than your parents who came through the Depression. But optimism is not hope. Hope, unlike optimism, is independent of people's circumstances. Hope is not based on the possibilities of a situation. Hope is grounded in the faithfulness of God. Hope is based on the possibilities, irrespective of how things are. Life doesn't always go right. But hope can spring up even in the valley of the shadow of death. Indeed, it is there that it becomes truly manifest. So I don't know if this has come across your Facebook feed yet. But Tuesday, this Tuesday, July 25th, is Christmas in July, right? Christmas in July is a thing. Or at least the uh, Hallmark movies as a whole.
whole month devoted to Christmas movies. They even put out two new movies this month for Hallmark Christmas movies, and of course the shopping centers are all, many are jumping in like Christmas in July theme. And being exposed to this has got me really thinking about what I love about Advent and the season of Christmas, especially the, the magic of Christmas Eve when we gather here and we sing the carols together and sing our hymns filled with such hope-filled messages. The peacefulness of the baby boy Jesus, the penis game singing heart the herald angels sing. And then Christmas ends, right? And it seems like it's just, we're right back to our old rut. January 2nd hasn't even passed yet, and our New Year's resolutions are already ending. And it bothered me why every Christmas I would have such hope, and I loved the, the hope of Christmas. And I realized, maybe for you, but for me, I had bought into optimism. I was living in optimism. What had happened to the beautiful message of a Savior born to the world? So I wonder now, having spent these weeks in Romans and, and really letting Paul's words sink in, especially this chapter 8. Remember, we can read this for ourselves. Have we confused optimism with hope? And this is the beautiful moment I had this week. I was running down the corridor, down that way, and on the corridor, in the sunshine, which isn't being picked up right now, was this beautiful, bright blue feather. And I'm sorry you can't see the stunning blue that was in the sun on the corner, and I, had just, I stopped dead in my tracks. And I remembered our Advent theme of angels among us, and remember in Advent we had feathers everywhere. Angels among us, feathers everywhere. And seeing that feather just gave me hope. The Spirit's presence. This is what Paul is talking about in this Romans text. The Spirit gives us assurance. The Spirit's presence is a pledge of what is to come. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. We are heirs. We are adopted. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. And for me, that feather is a signpost of the hope we have. And our sending hymn today, we will sing, All Earth is Hopeful. It's one of my favorite Advent hymns. And some of the words from this hymn are this. All earth is hopeful, the Savior comes at last. A virgin mother will bear a manual. She conceived him, God, with us. Our brother whose birth restores hope and courage to children of this earth. We first saw Jesus, a baby in a crib. This same Lord Jesus today has come to live in our world. He is present. That's not optimism. That is truthful, led hope for a hopeful Christmas in July. Amen. We are now going to sing the beautiful hymn, Neither Death Nor Life, hymn 622. It is a beautiful hymn, and it is completely based on Romans chapter 8. And if we were in June of the pandemic, Rob and Elsa came here, remember we were all in the shutdown, lockdown, and Rob and Elsa recorded some hymns for me that I played then online, we were on, back then, the Facebook Live only, and I remember being so blessed when they sang this song, 
But you've got your hymnals open to 622, and it's actually very hard to say. Because it reads horizontally. It's not a vertical verses. So I'm inviting you to sing the refrain only. There you see those first four lines are the refrain. And Rob and Elsa will sing then the verses for us again. Neither death nor life. And I invite you to stay seated.
those forbidden words be sung during the pandemic. We continue now with our prayers. And for our online congregation, I will say, the prayer response, I will say, we wait in patience. And I invite you to respond with, and hope. We wait in patience, and hope. Filled by the Spirit, let us join the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Lord of the harvest, sow the seeds of your word throughout the world, that all your children grow into your kingdom. Use our hands to tend your garden, wherever it may be. We wait in patience. Send the summer winds to bring much needed rain, and blow the hope of what is unseen through your creation, that it be set free from decay to bear good fruit. We wait in patience. Lord of all nations, guide our leaders with your strength and wisdom as they search for common ground. Through your mercy, show them the way to justice and peace. We wait in patience. Listen to the cries of your people, waiting patiently for your healing hand and comforting spirit those we now name silently in our hearts. Ease the sufferings of this present time and fill us with hope. We wait in patience. Teach your way, O Lord, to our congregation. Help us walk in your truth. Grow together in your word, mirror your patience. Treat one another with kindness, and sing your praises with undivided hearts. We wait in patience. Lord of hosts, you are the first and the last, gathering all those who have gone before us into one. Thank you for your promises of your steadfast love, and for their faithful witness. We wait in patience. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor trials of the present can ever separate us from the love of God poured out in Christ Jesus our Lord.
utterly holy and mighty, merciful God, you are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to give us hope and to accomplish all things for our salvation. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, me. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is new come into my blood, shed here for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray in your prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his home. Receive the benediction. And I invite you to join me in this song of after gold. Learn the ways of God. Trust in Jesus Christ, the Son. For he is the way to God. Live by the power of the Holy Spirit. Who will show you the love of Jesus. Amen. God protect you. Christ protect you. Spirit of God protect you. God who is three in one, keep you safely. Amen. I do invite you to stand and sing our sending song, All Earth is Vocal, in 266. Christ, Christ is with you. Go in peace and serve the Lord.